Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I want to share with you the uh, top cities for radiation fallout in the last two days. It's an extensive list. There's actually 18 cities that are above danger levels, and some of them as high as 7 or 800 counts per minute. And I wanted to refer quickly to the um, environmental response team guidelines showing that 300 counts per minute in an event of a uh, radiation release would warrant um, hazmat radioactive suits and respirators. And I'll enclose a link to this document so you can look it over in more detail. Um, they have uh, extensive guidelines here, anything from volcanoes to fertilize fire, fertilizer fires, and uh, the radi radiation scale is indicated uh, here at the bottom of the chart. It's 10 micrograms per hour or 300 counts per minute. Now her here is the current water vapor satellite view from the University of Washington. And we have lots of stuff going on everywhere. Uh, there's a, a system of, um, of the moisture that's coming up um, from Baja and Mexico. And some of the highest readings are located in this part of the U.S. In this part of the U.S., here on the coast, along these bands. And so far the readings aren't too bad in this area, but that's where all of this is going to be moving to today. So let me lead, read you the, the list of cities. Bismarck, North Dakota. Pierre, South Dakota. Amarillo, Fort Worth, and San Angelo, Texas. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Phoenix, Tucson, and Yuma, Arizona. Bakersfield, California. Spokane and Olympia, Washington. And again, here's this uh, band coming in from offshore that we're going to need to watch. Idaho Falls, Idaho. Louisville, Kentucky. St. Paul, Minnesota. And Kearney, Nebraska. And let me just look and see if I missed anything. Salt Lake City, Utah, also. Now, when we look at the uh, rainfall map for the next five days, you can see a large portion of the country is expecting rain. This is the rainfall that we've had within the last 24 hours. And all of these areas are basically where the high readings were coming in with the exception of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan. Also, I didn't see too many high readings here. Uh, let me go back to the last three days of jet stream movement. Now, both of these bands here are what seem to be reading high and the tail end of this one. And this is what we have going on for the next couple of days. Let me restart the animation. This is right now. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And again, let's go back to the water vapor analysis. Now, in addition to the areas that are covered by the jet stream and uh, areas where precipitation is predicted, uh, I really want to keep an eye on these bands because what we've been finding is that some of the highest fallout is occurring along these areas of demarcation. 
and you can see we've got a few of them. Now this band is what moved through North and South Dakota and that's now moving through Wisconsin, Michigan, and then on into uh, Ontario and New England. The part of the country that I'm probably least concerned with right now is here. But because we have so much going on, um, pretty much the rest of the country right now um, should be taking extreme precautions when going outside um, because of the jet stream, because of the precipitation, and because of the water vapor. Also, uh, there has been um, possibly some releases that have gone on since the De December 7th emergency nighttime drill by TEPCO. There are reports coming in that part of the uh, south wall of Reactor 4 is now missing. There has been some crane activity in that area, so it may be that TEPCO removed the panels, although why they wouldn't share that with us, I don't know. I am not aware of any um, fire or explosive event that has occurred around Reactor 4 in the last few days from people that have been closely monitoring the cameras. So that's what we have right now. I'll post a link um, to the EPA guidelines for emergency workers for you to look over and links to all of these graphs. But right now, um, we really need every local weather station in the country to be doing these reports because it's, it's really difficult to do them from coast to coast and get any kind of accuracy or, or um, pinpoint the highest areas. If it was done on a smaller scale, it, it would be much more reliable. So if your city was named in this list, I would suggest to you um, copying the link onto your local news Facebook page or emailing the link to this video or any of the other forecasts um, that I, I have on my list to them so that we can get some newscasters, uh, weathercasters interested in this and then uh, we would be able to share an awareness uh, with a much wider audience than what we have now. Um, I'm going to be putting together one of these uh, forecasts for Europe also today because there's been some high levels and uh, nosebleed reports from England. Uh, I did a video on that a few days ago and uh, what happened was the next day that high readings were posted in London and today and yesterday uh, Eurodep is also showing high readings of uh, different isotopes so I'll be uh, putting that out shortly and if anything changes with this forecast, I will keep you up to date. Stay safe, everyone.